Hi everyone, it's Brooke. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I thought I would just kind of do like a June chat. I don't know. I don't know what format I want the channel to take um, going forward. So I'm just going to just do videos that interest me for the time being and see what what works. And so I don't want to do like some sort of traditional June wrap up. Kind of bores me. So I'm just going to chat with you about some some things and some observations and some stuff I read and some stuff I'm reading just during the month mate can't even talk month of June and the first thing I want to say is I am now fully within my new office office sorry slash library space in the house in the new house and it's working out really great, but it's a little strange. We've had lots of people over, as you might imagine. We had a big housewarming party last Saturday. And uh, now when people walk in my front door, which is literally just like right here, uh, this is the first thing they see. And people know that I'm a reader, but they've never seen to the extent that I'm a reader. So... Most of my books in the last house were all upstairs in bedrooms and no one ever went up there. Now they're just, they welcome people as they walk in the front door and the comments I get from people are weird. I feel very exposed. Uh, Jimmy speaks about it, my husband if you didn't know, with like this weird level of pride that he's married to someone that's read this many books because he doesn't read books. Um, and I get sort of two-ish reactions from people from the non-reading crowd is like, holy fuck, <laughs> like how many books can you possibly read? And then from the reading crowd, I, I get the, I feel like we're soulmates <laughs> uh, reaction, which is fun if it just, it's just a little, it's a lot when you have like 30 plus people come into your house and all want to talk to you about books, which I typically don't talk too much about in my real life. Um, but it's fun nonetheless, and I'm glad to have this space. I really, really like it quite a bit. I'm even actually filming on a real grown-up, not fancy, very cheap <laughs> tripod, but I have a tripod for the office now, so that's nice. Um, as far as reading goes in June, it wasn't the worst, wasn't the best. So I'm still trying to find my reading footing again. Uh, I start off the month with my book club read and didn't really love it. Uh, then I read, I finished reading Pretty Face, which was the romance, one of the romance novels I talked about in my last video. So if you want to hear my lovely thoughts on Pretty Face, which I loved, I love Lucy Parker, you can check that out. I thought I would just talk a little bit more in depth about a couple books I really did enjoy this month, um, which is pretty much all I've read. <laughs> Poor things. Uh, the first one is a graphic novel, and it's called All Summer Long. It's by Hope Larson. The insides look like this. It's got a little orange and black and white color palette going on. This is probably aimed at a fairly middle grade audience. The main character is 13. Um, she, her name is Bina, and her best friend Charlie, they've had this sort of very intense, close friendship since forever. I mean, they're, they're next-door neighbors, so they're kind of each other's built-in security blanket until this one summer when Charlie suddenly is like, you know, I'm not going to be around this summer. I'm going to go do my own thing at the soccer camp. And Bina's suddenly left alone and trying to figure out who she is independent of the person that's always been by her side. And I feel like that's very much a coming of age thing. You know, friend groups changing. At around 13, you're really starting to discover your hobbies and your interests and what you're really into and who you are and how that might not be necessarily the person uh, that you've always been or thought you were or the person who is friends with certain people and how friendship divides can start happening. Um, so we get to see her kind of come into her own home, her own independence, and then how her and Charlie's relationship changes going forward. And, you know, it's one of those lessons that I think is really important around this age, but also you go through it a million times over again. 
if you move, your friend group changes. If uh, people near, you know, your dear friends move away, you have to change your friend, friend group. Um, different working situations. I mean, just all kinds of things can, can trigger the fact that you have to start over as far as the people you surround yourself with. And so I think this is kind of a universal experience. And um, yeah, it's just really cute and fun. And it reminds me a little bit of, what's it, what's it called? This one summer. Because <laughs> I can just see it on the bookshelves now. But, but just aimed at a younger audience. And I will say, I think this would be a great like read along if you have sort of a 11, 12, 13 year old. I think it would be such a, a perfect kind of parent child discussion book. So that's that. And then you guys, so I, I like to binge watch TV in the summer, especially if like the past year or so a show has ended and I can just, cause I save shows. I don't really like to like the, watch them until they're all done. So I binge watch what ended in the, the previous year during the summertime. And so this summer I spent the first half of June binge watching all six seasons of Teen Wolf, which I thoroughly enjoyed. I thought it was actually quite a good TV show. Some seasons better than others, but largely not what I expected in the best way. Um, but it sort of triggered this like feeling in me that I wanted to get back to some urban fantasy. Um, my favorite kind of in the past, in my past lives, my favorite sort of escapist, escapist genre of choice has been urban fantasy. There have been years of my life where that's all I read. So I've read most of the big classic series, something like um, Laurel K. Hamilton's Anita Blake series. I, I, I didn't read all of them, but I read like 14. That's was quite a bit. Um, but I haven't read any urban fantasy in whew, a decade. That makes me feel old, but I guess I was about 24 10 years ago, huh? So, uh, but, I, but Teen Wolf reminded me of those days. And because I'm in such an escapist place in my reading right now, I wanted to get back to those roots. And so I thought, why not give Sean McGuire's October Day series a go? And so I read the first book in that series, Rosemary and Root. This was published in 2009. It's now on like book 10 or 11 or something. Um, and it is about our lead heroine named October, nicknamed Toby, who is a changeling. This is very much centered in the fey world and it has a whole lot of the normal urban fantasy tropes. So either you like them or you don't. I think Sean McGuire, I think this is her debut. And this, she she handles them all quite well. Uh, it's not the most perfect book. I think there's a lot of room for the series to improve and I've heard that each book gets better, but this book was super solid. I liked Toby so much. You know, it kind of opens where she is on this chase. She's kind of like a private investigator person for the, her liege lord, she's an actual knight in, in the Fey world. And her liege lord's um, wife and daughter have been kidnapped and so uh, um, Toby's on the case and then she gets turned into a fish for 14 years. Um, and then the book really gets properly started when she's come back to her like human Fey form. Uh, and she has pretty much shunned the fey world after all that nonsense and she's trying to kind of disappear into the human world until she of course gets drawn back into the shenanigans of of fey san francisco um and i just liked her as a character i am very much in that realm of loving the kind of female protagonist sort of grittier um lonely sarcastic very flawed um, heroine that urban fantasy loves to focus on. Just I'm really into that. I know a lot of people find it tiring. I, I like it. Uh, and, and that's very much Toby. This book, I mean, Sean McGuire excels at world building and I think some people might get bogged down in some of that. I mean, she probably mentions like two dozen different kinds of fae 
in this and you don't have to remember all of them but it's a lot and uh lots of like political connections and all these things and i think for that reason it starts off slow um, but then once the pace gets going, basically when Toby continually gets shot and fails at her job over and over and over again, the pace is really actually quite quick. Um, and it's a book I think also people might struggle with because we don't have a true sense of who Toby is in this yet because she's still trying to get back on her feet and figure herself out. But she goes on that journey here and she ends up in a far more confident place. I will also say... I think what can either be a weakness or a strength in urban fantasy is how real the stakes feel because when you have a main character like this that's going to exist throughout a series, it can weaken the stakes because you know she's not going to die permanently. Uh, so it's hard to make, give you the edge of your seat feeling like people are really in danger. Um, at least that October is really in danger when you know that she's going to live. Um, and I, I never really felt not worried for her. You know, I think Sean McGuire conquered that really, really excellently. Like, I always worried for Toby. I always thought she might die. Um, I didn't even know if she would actually solve the case. Um, and people in here are not safe. There is death. Uh, yeah, and and so overall, you know, as some fun escapist reading, I enjoy the hell out of it. So I'm absolutely going to be continuing on with the series. And then just currently, I am reading uh, The Anomaly by Michael Rucker. This is my book of the month club pick. It is not my typical thing, but again... I just want all of the plotty plot plot books and this is a sort of horror thriller that has been compared to like an Indiana Jones National Treasure um, X-Files mashup which I think is accurate. I'm about 70 something pages in. It's about a guy who like hosts this YouTube series where he just kind of goes into like American conspiracy conspiracy theories and like secret history and tries to decide if it's true or not and there was this cave that was found in 1909 by this expedition and it, it, weird things happened but it's never been found since and it's supposed to be in the Grand Canyon so he's leading a group into this cave trying to find the cave and then see what's what and um, horror ensues uh, and it's just got those like short punchy chapters where you you get their cliffhangers and you just have to keep reading so in the way of like keeping me super interested it's it's working wonderfully it makes me want to read it um it is written by a man with a male protagonist um with some male humor i'm not super in love with but i think because i'm not really reading it on that level, I'm just reading it for like plot. It's fine and it's working well. Um, and as far as all this stuff goes, it's not like the worst male novel novel ever, but you know, I just read so much female led fiction that it's noticeable to me. That's all. And then the book I am sort of taking my time with because it's one of my most anticipated reads of the year. It is sort of ur urban fantasy too. Um, and that is Trail of Lightning by uh, Rebecca Roanhorse. Um, it is, I, I'm not even, like, I can't, I've only read one chapter and I didn't want to know what the book is really about. I wanted to just have it surprise me, but her main character is Maggie and she is Native American and there's like, a climate apocalypse apparently and someone's been kidnapped and she's been hired and she has powers and you know the first chapter was super great the first chapter of this was better than anything in Rosemary and Rue by Shauna McGuire so I am hoping that the book continues with this level of fun but again I've only read a few pages so we'll see and that's pretty much it for June July is coming and you guys um, so if you subscribe to Book of the Month, 
in July, I will be a guest judge for Book of the Month Club. And so you can check out my pick there. I think that BookTube in particular might be really excited about the book I got to blurb. And um, yeah, so that's exciting. And I look forward to getting through what I'm currently reading and much more, maybe depending on if I decide to binge watch things like Brooklyn Nine-Nine, which I'm about to go watch right now. Okay. Well, anyways, that's me, and I will see you guys next time.